Today's podcast is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands and small businesses. It's free to join. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces their members to cool new products such as outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and even oysters based on a preference quiz they fill out when signing up. Members are all about discovering cool new goods they probably wouldn't have found anywhere else and that spark their next hobby, experience, or conversation. They really prize high quality and value. Here's how it works. You'll get a box assigned to you at the start of each month based on your preferences, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what's to come inside to decide if you like it. You can one, keep it, two, swap it for a different box or offer, or three, skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. You will only pay for what you want. The box lineup changes every month, so you will always have a chance to find something new you're really into. And there's always free shipping, easy returns, and no hassles ever. You can unbox something new every month in a club hundreds of thousands strong. To get 20% off of your monthly subscription to Bespoke Post, use code Casey and Ray 20 at checkout. That's code Casey and Ray 20 at checkout. Check it out. BespokePost.com and use code Casey and Ray 20 at checkout. Casey and Ray 20 at checkout. Join host Dave Houghton and Sarah Ray Pallet as they examine the less glamorous side of sports with their podcast, In a Pickle. Follow IAP Radio on social media by going to iapradio.com. In a Pickle is now part of the Den Network. For more information, go to iapradio.com. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Welcome to another episode of Deluxe Edition. I am your host, Casey Shearer. Joining me, as always, the man with the plan, L. Ray Sexton. What's going on, Casey? Not too much, buddy. How are you? Uh, I, you know, it's a bye week for the Browns, so I'm in a good mood. <laughs> no loss this week? Can't lose if you don't play. That's what I always say. <laughs> they started so strong, too. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? They'll come back next week. They'll... They just need a little break. They'll they'll get them. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we don't have a guest this week, so nope. uh, we're f- flying by the seat of our pants here, as they say. So let me just uh, do the house cleaning very quick, and then uh, I will. The reason I called Ray, the man of the plan, is because I'm going to hand the show off to him after I, I have a very quick little story I want to tell here, and then uh, we'll move on to Ray. But first... Let's see. We are a part of the Deluxe Edition Network. Head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com to find all of the other great shows on the network. The podcasts of the month this month are The Graveyard Club and Terror Tuesday. Terror Tuesday is an Instagram live show. And The Graveyard Club seems to be mostly coming out on YouTube lately. Uh, They have some great episodes on YouTube about some old horror movies. Uh, Go check it out. I think the most recent one is about the Bride of Frankenstein. So go check them out. 
If you would like to support our show, you could go over to patreon.com slash deluxe edition pod. Ray is handling the Instagram duties over at deluxe edition pod. And if you'd like to find all of our previous shows, head over to deluxe edition dot show. And Ray, how about you? I made a little clip here for you. So if you want to just read this, you, you can tell people have- exactly where to go. Go to T Public and buy stuff. <laughs> 10 Cent Beer Night Podcast Store. Go watch YouTube. If you're just listening to this, you'll see the link down below us. And that's how you find it. I'll put all the links in the description as well. They have uh, some great bootleg merchandise over there. And Ray's been posting mm-hmm. some uh, great, um, some some very beautiful women have been getting our tank tops it's getting a little cold out but there's some other things over <laughs> there's some other things over on the uh, t public uh, site as well uh hoodies and such for the colder weather yep i say this is this is beautiful tank top weather for women <laughs> it's perfect weather it's perfect weather all right i think that's it right i hit everything right oh if you want to get any of our t-shirts go over to whatamaneuver.net slash collection slash deluxe dash edition all right so no guests this week <clears throat> but something huge in reading uh happened reading pennsylvania happened uh last weekend currently it just happened yesterday we, re- we record a week early everybody should know that by now so it happened on october 7th of uh, 2023 they finally buried Stone Man Willie. Yeah, they did. Have you heard about this? I did see this story. Yeah, so apparently it's been making the rounds of, of the news, the headlines of the news. It's uh, the New York Post. That's where I'm going to read this article from real quick. Uh, the New York Post. Um, and actually, a uh, pod- great podcast on our network, Horsing Around did an episode on stone man willie they're from reading the guys uh from horse uh red horse hair salon in reading pennsylvania they did a, a really good episode on this uh stone man willie so just a real quick thing for the last 128 years ray stone man willie has been lying in a funeral home uh in reading pennsylvania and the public was allowed to come see him uh, whenever they wanted, basically, all they had to do was knock on the door and ask. And he was just laying in a room upstairs in a casket because Allman back in 1895, I guess it was, wanted to get some embalming fluid and hope that Stone Man Willie's like people would come and take him. And it never happened. And the more I was reading the story about it today, apparently he was not the only mummy that this guy had at one point. At one point, there were two mummies in there. Like He embalmed another guy until the guy's family came and got him. Well, you know what they say? If one's good, two's better. Nine is great. So there's probably seven more mummies he's got stashed. Wouldn't that be crazy? They had this whole funeral for him, and then the dude just brings out another one, slaps it down. <laughs> this is this is Stone Cold Steve. <laughs> He's our new mummy, and hope hope to God it's another hundred years before his family finds him too. Well, another really weird thing about this story is that in like I think 2012, when the Almond family finally like sold out of the funeral home business and they sold it to like a corporation like a funeral home corporation and they kept stone man willie there like this well why wouldn't they how is that in any way legal i mean i know it was like Uh, had to be grandfathered in i guess at this point i'm assuming that if you're like a local legend and you get dragged around parades and stuff like you're like a celebrity Right. So, and he's a mummy and nobody knows who he is. And they were just going to bury him in a potter's grave. So technically holding him until the family eventually shows up, you're actually being kind of nice about it. Well, here's the thing. Apparently reading the article, like they just 
just revealed his name, his actual name, to, at the burial. Mm-hmm. Almond knew who it was. Like there's there's Reading Eagle articles from that time where he knew who the person was. Yeah. Well, sometimes you got to go the extra mile to to make a little cash there, Casey. Yeah, but I don't think he was. That's the whole thing. I don't think he was charging people to come see him. Like he was just like, "Hey, come check out. You want to see a dead body?" <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, it's like having a monkey paw. Nobody asks you where you got it. <laughs> you know, I guess. I, I don't know. It's just one of them weird things where it's like, "Yeah, we got a mummy. Want to see it? Cool. <laughs> let's check it out." You think other people would like this? Yeah. All right, let's make this a, a Reading, Pennsylvania thing. I grew up in Reading. I lived there for 40 years. I never saw Stone Man Willie. In my recollection, I never went to see Stone mm. Man Willie. Missed and now I, now. Yep, now I'll never see him because he was finally laid to rest in, in Pennsylvania, in Reading, Pennsylvania, somewhere. And his name was James Murphy, his, his real name. So, so hear me out here. So we dig him up. <laughs> Stone Man James, and we buy some, I don't know, a funeral home. We become funeral directors and we display him again with his real name. What do you think? Well, that definitely has to be a crime. <laughs> Digging up a body. Not a body, it's a mummy. <laughs> I see that they do this in Indiana Jones and the mummy movies all the time. People dig them up. Don't you watch movies? This is how it's done. <laughs> They would definitely know where we got the mummy from, though. Nah, highly doubtful. There's got to be tons of mummies just lying around. <laughs> I mean, you can st- have you seen Stone Man Willie? Yeah, yeah, I saw the pictures. I'm just saying, though, you can sell your body to science and to, to just hang in a classroom. And there's, a, there's like, uh, you know, that's a uh, Casey skeleton over there. We're going to check out what a femur is. And it's just you hanging there for all eternity. So they get tired of you and throw you in the back room, get a new one. Is that what like I checked the organ donor box on my on my license? Is that what they do? Oof. Is that yeah. what they're gonna do to me? Yeah. Some kid in a classroom is gonna have your spleen just cutting it apart, checking out what's in it. You know? Fuck. That's why you don't check that box. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. I always say, you know, this is something something that you need to live by is, is you don't need to be an organ donor because you should use up at least 95 to 98, 98% of each body part. So there shouldn't be anything worth anything left when you die because you used it to the maximum. If you're giving away a perfectly good set of lungs or a liver or kidneys, you are not enjoying your life. <laughs> If some other dude gets your liver and he's like, man, this thing fits good. I bet I could drink 12, 15 beers with this bad boy every night. That means you didn't use that liver. They get a liver like mine and they're like, man, I'm going to need another one of these in about a year and a half. What the hell? I never thought about that. Yeah. You know, nobody's going to want my stuff anyway. You don't know that. Black market eyeballs are expensive. You know, from experience. Well, you know. People wake up in Mexico in bathtubs full of ice all the time. It's pretty Isn't legit. true? Oh, it's got to be true. You've seen how it else, in a movie. How else would you get black market organs? <laughs> Is the black market a real thing? Like the black market <laughs> organs? Like are people really buying people's organs on the I'll black you, market? I'll tell you right now. I know how hospitals in America work. I could not afford to get a transplant here. I'm going on the black market, probably North Korea or some shady place like that. Going to get me something for like fifteen ninety five plus shipping and handling. Find me some backyard doctor. You know, he's got that book, Doctoring for Dummies. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Nick or whatever the fuck that guy's name is from The Simpsons. <laughs> from The Simpsons, yeah. Yeah, that's the kind of doctor I'm going to. I'm like, all right, so I ordered these kidneys online. They should be here in about a week. Do you think we can scrub down the, the bathroom and maybe do this? Well, yeah. sometimes I think like other countries might be more sophisticated when it comes to like medical stuff. Like, why are people going to Mexico for all this stem cell stuff? 
Why why aren't um, we allowed to do that here? Because our government is in cahoots with the medical people to make everything super expensive because doctors don't want to cure anything. They want everyone to be addicted to medicines and have to take medicines. So that's why they don't cure hardly anything anymore. Look at all the shit they cured. They cured polio. They probably did it in a garage. And we can't cure anything anymore. It's yeah. like, nope, nope. You get a vaccine for that now. No, nope, no. Nope. Oh, no. You got to do that the rest of your life every year. We can't cure nothing. That's how it works now. Did you see the Mr. Pfizer? Yeah, Mr. Pfizer. Did you see? Did you see them, Travis Kelsey? Yeah, that's what. Uh, what's his name's calling him? Because he's doing the commercials now for Pfizer. I guarantee you, one hundred percent, that dude had two band aids with no poke holes underneath them in that commercial. I guarantee it. You can't tell me that that dude's up there like, yeah, jab me with something. That I don't know what it is. I'm a millionaire with everything going for me in the world. My immune system is strong as shit. I'm a football player. Yeah, for the for the, sh- the <laughs> for the shuckles you're giving me, the shekels. Yeah, let me risk well, they everything. Probably they probably didn't jab him right before the commercial. He's got to do a commercial, but you don't uh, think he got? Yeah. Is it not mandatory in any NFL? No, I guess not, not because uh, what's his name didn't get it right. Um, yeah, but- Kelsey's from Cleveland, and we're dumb as shit here. We don't believe in medicine. I bet he's never been to a doctor. <laughs> uh, that's not true because he had to go to the doctor at halftime today and get an x-ray. That's not a real – that's a team doctor. <laughs> like, the, the x-rays come back, and they're blurry. Ah, oh, you're fine, Travis. Look, at, <laughs> here's your x-ray. Why is it so blurry? Oh, pff, I don't know. That's how these machines work. But you're fine. <laughs> All right, what do you have for us today, Ray? So, in our last minute efforts to come up with a show idea, I Googled, what are some topics for a podcast? And Google has provided us with some helpful information on what we can do this evening. As the results came back as fun podcast topic ideas. So, here's the first one. Speak about some cool countries or cities. So I'm going to do that right now for you. (laughs) Please do. I would love to hear about your cool country and city. Did you know that in Japan, women can hire a good looking guy to come watch chick flicks with them and wipe their tears as they watch the movie? You're kidding me. I swear to God, man. What if the man cries? I don't know. He wipes his own face off. She's not paying. (laughs) She's paying him. He can. I don't know. I just thought that was really a, a, a cool topic to talk about. Who's going to wipe my tears, Ray? I guess you'd have to call the dude. Like, how well, many chick flicks are you watching? So it's all, well, it doesn't have, I, I, I can cry at like a commercial. I've, I've almost <laughs> been very close to crying on this show multiple times. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> What do you think that uh, you could transfer that to other movies? Like if it's a horror movie, you could have somebody sit there and be like, calm down. It's just a movie. You know, you pay them to do that. Like, I mean, what's wrong with Japanese women that they need? They can't get a man to sit there and be like, wipe their tears away. Why they got to pay somebody? Yeah. Well, they, because they probably don't want to spend any more extra time with that person than they yeah, true. Than they <laughs> don't, you know. So we still need to look into this as a viable American market and open it up for for ourselves. Well, you know what? Let's start it up, dude. I'll Unfortunately, do it. Unfortunately, my empathy level is very low. <laughs> so sitting there wiping tears and trying to act like I give a shit would probably be i'd really have to get paid a lot to pretend like i care like well, you, it's a fucking movie like you i heard like, what i said i said i would do it yeah i'd have like a stick with like a, a wash towel wrap ta- duct tape to it and just wipe their face from across the room like yeah 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 so sad oh so sad would you Maybe. speak like a japanese man is that what you would have to because it's a japanese thing 
Oh, so sorry. You know, you'd have no choice. Oh, that's what I call my company, too. The Japanese tear wiper co company. You cry, we dry. 100% support this idea. Excellent decision. Put that on our list of things to take care of. I, it's already written down. All right. So here's another fun fact. Uh, Hamburg, Germany. The people who live there are, call, are officially called hamburgers. That's a true story. That is real. They, if you're a citizen of Hamburg, Germany, you are called a hamburger. Now, does that, because there is a Hamburg, Pennsylvania, that's not very far from Reading, Pennsylvania. It's all, I actually lived in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. So what did you refer to yourself as when you lived there? Uh, Casey Shearer. And when people said, where are you from? Hamburg. And then they would say, oh, so you're a, a Hamburglar? <laughs> No, like nobody talks like that. Nobody says that. <laughs> like, where are you from? Are you a Clevelandian? I'm a Clevelander. Yeah. Oh, Cleveland, Clevelander. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. trying to. I was trying to put that together. I was put. I was putting like a. Yeah. I was gonna say I mean, Cleveland, thing, Clevelandier. Yeah. Yeah. Clevelander. You guys don't talk like that. Like a Redding, Reddinger, or no, no. Hmm. That's weird. A person from Reading. Yeah, what's wrong with you? You know what? I I just thought of this the other day, though. In Pennsylvania, like from our area, there were a lot of people. Like my grandmother was Pennsylvania Dutch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like she, her people were from Germany. You know, but they yeah. call they call them Pennsylvania Dutch. But like the Dutch people are from like Holland. Yeah, you know? like, mm -hmm. isn't that weird? That is weird. But you have you asked they also that you also gave us Taylor Swift. So you guys are yeah. all fucking wrong over there. I don't know what you guys are doing. <laughs> like I don't think we have Cleveland Dutch from like you know Sweden. I mean that don't make no sense neither, does it? No. We just have Clevelanders. Is there such a thing as Sweden Dutch? I don't know. <laughs> I only looked up Hamburg. <laughs> I needed I needed some stuff to talk about, so I looked up some weird shit. All right. This is this is Google's fault that I have any of this information. All right. Well, here is a fun fact for you about Hamburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah. They do, and it just happened a few weeks ago. They do have a hamburger festival. Nice. Smart. Yeah. Profit off the name. Yep. And it was I saw pictures this year and it was fucking packed. Well, once again, who doesn't love hamburger? Yeah. Vegans. <laughs> what do they know? <laughs> All right. And now here's fun fact number three on the cool countries and cities topic. These are the top five cities in the United States that you are most likely to be murdered in. All right. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> number five, Cleveland. Yeah. Making the top five. Yeah. Number four, not a surprise. There's our boys from Detroit. Number three, New Orleans. Oh. I think that's got a lot to do with voodoo and zombies and stuff, though. Uh, number two is Baltimore. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah. Damn. Damn. Barbara's daughter lives in Baltimore, outside of Baltimore. Uh -huh. Don't go. Don't go into the city. Not at night. Uh, and number one. St. Louis, of all places. Oh. Yeah. Chicago didn't even make the top five. Damn. And all I see on the news is murder there anymore. Was Reading? What What was the count? Like, did it have to be a so many citizens for the I city? Think, yeah, I think it was uh, murders per people. Yeah. So that's why it works out the way it did. All right. I, Philly didn't even make the list, huh? Yeah. Not the top five. Damn. This is a couple years old, though. You know, they can try harder this year, and they can make the list. All right. You know, Detroit's slipping down. They're a four. Man, Detroit was the murder capital for a long time. But, eh, you know, you got to give somebody else, uh, got to give up the, the title once in a while to make things look legit. Give somebody else a chance. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to have the, the job. You got to do the work. 
Are we, we're going to be safe on uh, the 28th, right? No, but it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to the part where most people get murdered. All right. Yeah, we'll be fine. All right. I think. <laughs> I've never actually been to that place, but I, I assume it's nice this time of year. <laughs> All right. So our next category, Casey, is called tell biographical facts about famous people. Okay. Now, remember, this is what Google thinks good podcasts do. Yeah. We've had a lot of famous people on our podcast. But I'm not going to talk about any of them because no. I found some interesting facts about other people. All right. Fact number one. Matthew Perry lost part of his right middle finger when he was three when a car door got slammed on it. Damn. So if you pay attention on Friends, you can see the tip of his middle finger on his right hand is gone. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if he ever tells you, go fuck yourself, you go, just a tip? <laughs> Yeah, I know that's a bad one, but I liked it, man. I thought it was really funny. <laughs> yeah. What I liked best about it was if you're not watching on YouTube, uh, the best part about it is Ray's evil look after he said it. Yeah, I highly, highly recommend you watch us on YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. I put a lot of effort into these fucking videos. Please yeah. watch us on YouTube. Yeah, you should probably get grab a picture of his hand so they can see it. Oh, like super <laughs> close up. There's definitely going to be a picture of Matthew Perry's hand in this video. Oh. Yeah, there has to be. <laughs> so fun fact number two, Charlie Sheen accidentally shot his fiance Kelly Preston when they were together. So he had a gun in his shorts that he left in the pocket. And when she picked up the pair of shorts, the gun fell out, hit the floor, shot the toilet, and then the fragments from the toilet hit oh. her and caused the injury, according to him. Oh. According to the hospital, it looked like she was stitched up for a, a gunshot wound that grazed her. Oh, shit. Yeah. This is very similar to the, the Dusty story from ZZ Top. Tell me. Um, I don't know this one. Oh, so he came home one night sat down and like all you know men have when they come home at night his wife was pulling his boots off you know you come home that's what your wife does right or your girlfriend or whoever so according to the story dusty forgot he had a gun in his boot so when his boot popped off the gun flip floppied up into the air hit the ground and shot himself in the stomach oh. to which he immediately said Ah, shit. That's the first words out of his mouth. So he's got to go to the hospital. Never charged with anything. They never asked any questions like, are you sure you didn't come home and she shot you for, you know, running around or anything like that? Because that's a pretty, pretty specific way to get shot. They just let it go. And they're like, yeah, cool. He survived. You know, everything's fine. But can you imagine that the look on your face when you see your gun flying up in the air and you're like, well, <laughs> I sure hope that ain't gonna uh, bang. Nah, shit, I'm shot. God damn it. Jesus. So apparently in Hollywood and celebrity life, guns flying around and just going off on their own is, you know, they should probably have a class about safeties and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, though, I'm pretty sure they just let people buy guns. Like, you don't really... <laughs> You don't need to take the class before you get the gun. Well, that just you know, I'm pretty sure both of these happy to happen in the 80s and 90s. So you know, things were different back then. Yeah. Plus, probably a little cocaine flying around. Yeah, you know, you know, you, how do you forget you got a gun on you? I have no idea. You think that be up? <laughs> oh, car keys, hang those up. Take my wallet out of my pocket. Oh, better get the gun out my boot. Put that on the shelf. <laughs> you know, you think that would be like. The sequence, you know, like when you leave work, you're like, all right, phone, wallet, keys, got them. Because you don't want to get home and be like, fuck, I don't have my wallet. Yeah. So you go through, you know, phone, wallet, keys, gun. That would be the sequence. I got everything. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, Dusty. Is, which, one's, which one died? Dusty. 
he's oh, dead. he's the, he's the not from one. that gunshot one, though. No, he's, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I always thought it was weird that their drummer's name was Frank Beard. Yeah, he doesn't have a beard, and he was the only one without the beard, right? But I, I technically, I guess that makes it means he has a beard is his last name. I mean, technically, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so all right, fun fact number three in this category, okay. Nicolas Cage outbid Leonardo DiCaprio for a Mongolian dinosaur skull. Guess how much he ended up paying for this thing? Uh, can I ask, what, is it in the millions? No. All right. Well, then like 600 grand? $276,000. That's fucking a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a Mongolian dinosaur skull. And like, what were they expecting to get out of this? Like, are, are they, are they, are they, sorry, is he a Scientologist? Nick? Yeah. I don't think so. I hope not because I really just started liking him. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's not, but he could uh, be. I don't know. It's rampant in Hollywood. You know, I would join, but they got that weird pyramid scheme thing that they do where you got to pay all this money to get to the upper tiers and i just can't afford it man <laughs> i i can i can barely keep food on the table i can't become a big wig in scientology with my income i'm always going to be on the bottom yeah I, I just don't think that's fair it's not fair none of no. it is no, so that's why i'm not a scientologist but what what were they trying to get out of this skull was there something like Look, man, why did Michael Jackson buy a monkey? Well, or the I elephant mean, man's bones? Like, rich why people wouldn't you buy a monkey? Shit. Well, I mean, <laughs> if he was green, fine. But uh, I just don't, you know, rich people get bored and they buy shit. I mean, look at, like, the super rich, you know, like, yeah, does Nick Cage make a lot of weird-ass movies? But, yeah, but that's because he's got a lot of money. He can afford to do it. Yeah. Uh, Leonardo, he can do whatever he wants too. So they can fight over a dinosaur skull. Speaking Not of Leo, I was listening to uh, NPR yesterday, uh -huh. and it was uh, there was an interview with a guy who worked for I don't know if he still works there, but he worked worked or works for Leonardo DiCaprio's production company, and his right. his job his his job specifically was to just read through every script that comes through. Like people just, I guess, will drop scripts off mm -hmm. like trying to get his production company to make a movie or like try to get him to be in the movie. Yeah. And this guy's job is just to read through like hundreds of scripts a week and decide if this is a good role for Leonardo DiCaprio or not. I could do that job. Hell yeah, that'd be an awesome job. That'd be a great job. I just look at him. I throw like 60, 70 out of my way. <laughs> like, hey man, this one's great right here. This is the one. I, I just, I'd only work like an hour a week. Most of it would just be burning scripts that I never read. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for the next category? 100%. Okay. It says do book or film reviews. So I only wrote down one sentence for this one. Okay. The Hobbit is a great book. <laughs> Man, that category. Fil wait, film? Is this book and? It's book and film, but we're going to talk about movies and stuff later in the month, so. Okay. Oh, are you? Well, let me just talk about this one movie I saw. Yeah. I just We just watched it. It was, I think it's on Netflix. It's a new uh, Benicio Del Toro movie called Reptile. Great movie. I love yeah. Benicio del Toro, man. I, I think like he is one of the best actors like ever in Hollywood. My yeah. girlfriend argues with me about this all the time, but he is like really fucking good. Now I did actually movie. I did actually watch Strays yesterday. Holy shit, is that funny, dude? Is it? Oh my god, is it so funny? It is not a kid's movie. For anybody that's a parent out there, this is not for kids. There are so many f bombs and inappropriate things, like it's. But it is hilarious. Do you think uh, there's going to be like a swing in movies? Like, do you think stuff like that will start coming back? Because like in the '90s, that that kind of stuff was like 
all around everywhere like like raunchy comedy movies what this one i think gets away with it because it's dogs doing it yeah because it's not people right so i think that's how they get around it being so raunchy because they're like well no that's how dogs act you know is that how like south park gets away with it still like just because it's a cartoon it's a cartoon it's a cartoon I would like to see it swing back to where live action is like that. I want Blazing Saddles. I want movies like that to be made today. Yeah. Or even American Pie, you know. Yeah, that's, like that's what I mean. Like that that type of stuff. You can't even make stuff like that hardly without it being considered inappropriate and canceled and ugh, you know, sense of humor is a good thing to have. Okay, so according to the internet and Google and, and specifically, uh Make a coaching podcast and teach your audience something. So I'm going to teach everybody how to make the perfect boiled egg. Because I can make the best boiled eggs on the planet. And I guarantee you, if you follow my directions to the T, your eggshells will just fall off. They'll be completely cooked and the yolk will always be yellow. It won't be that sickly green color and all runny and fucked up. So here's what you do. You get a pot, you put some water in it, sprinkle some salt in that, bring it to a boil. Gently with a spoon, lower the eggs in to the boiling water. Boil said eggs for exactly 12 minutes. At the 12 minute mark, turn the heat off, leave eggs in water for 12 more minutes. After 12 minutes, take said eggs, put them in a bowl full of ice for 12 more minutes. Then remove from ice, put in fridge, and enjoy. I guarantee you, if you do that, you will say these are the best hard boiled eggs I've ever had, and I will never make them anyway other than this again. Does it take a long fucking time? Yes. Will you be tempted at eight, nine, ten minutes to pull them out of the boiling water? Yes, you will. <laughs> but do not fucking do it. You will ruin the eggs. Twelve minutes. It's a twelve minute system. Yes. 12 minutes, 12, 12 minutes in, 12 minutes out. Well, tw- you got to boil the water first. Right. The eggs have to go into the boiling water and be in there for 12 minutes. And then just turn the heat off. Let them sit there for another 12, relaxing. And then they go in the ice for 12. Oh, so it's 12, 12, and 12. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. This is a long, grueling process to get through. I, I, would, I would say set a timer. Don't sit there and stare at them. Sure. You go you go fucking mad. You'll you lose your mind. You'll be like, it's been six minutes. I can't take this. I gotta get them eggs out of there. You know, I boil them for six minutes. I, I'm starving to death. You, you don't make these when you're hungry. You'll fuck them up and they won't be perfect. I've had several people do this and they're like, it takes forever, but it does work. They're the best. <laughs> they're See, the I, best I, I've ever fucking had. I don't have to do that because Barbara got this. Uh it's it's basically it does all of that and it has a timer on it it's it's like a called an egg cooker yeah. you can put like six i think six eggs in at one time it's like a little dome thing you actually it has like a little piercing thing that you have to pierce the end of the egg with it yeah yeah and then set it in there hmm interesting it's not too shabby bud <laughs> we eat, I, I eat a lot, i mean i eat a lot of eggs so uh, i love eggs you know, eggs are good for you. Yeah. That's that's a scientific fact. Now, are you a yolk guy? Do you eat the yolk? I'll, I'll eat the fucking shell if I could cook it, right? <laughs> I love eggs. Yeah, I'm a yolk guy my, myself. Now, See, what do you do with the hard? What do you do with the hard boiled eggs? Do you make like chicken salad, tuna salad, or do you eat it? Just eat it. I I like to put salt on them and just eat them. But I also like to chop them up and throw them in salads. You know, that's the two ways I like them. Or I like to color them, hide them about the house. Doesn't matter what time of year, and look for them and then eat them. How long do you give before you give up on finding the eggs? Oh, you can't give up. You ever smell rotten egg in your apartment, there, buddy? You gotta, you gotta remember. No, there's... because I, I've never fucking done that. Have you ever done the adult version where somebody hides beers around the yard? You ever done that one? No. So uh, there's, 
<laughs> so on Easter, after you've been drinking all day, one of your buddies will hide a 12 pack all over the yard. And then you and your buddies will run around looking for the beers in the yard. It's fun. <laughs> adult. It's like, a, it's an adult Easter egg hunt, but you adult use beers. Easter egg hunting with beer. Yeah. All right. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all about it. All right. So that's, that's uh. so, all right. So according to the internet, we're killing it because we've done one, two, four of their advice things. So I will be expecting many views just for our topics today. Let's see here. Okay. So this is ridiculous here. Tell about your daily chores. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So chore number one, pretend that I give a shit about other people <laughs> and smile and say, yeah, that's cool, bro. Let's, let's get through this work day. Dude, uh, another how chore. hard is it? Like, I, I, thankfully, with my job that I, I did have for the last seven, eight years, I really didn't have to deal with too many people. Like, when I worked with people before, like, mm -hmm. that was that was like the biggest chore of the day is like fucking at, like pretending that you like these people. Like, there was a guy every day he would come in to work, and they, these were his fucking words when he would come in to work. Every single day, this is. Man, I just ain't feeling it today. <laughs> well, when the fuck are you feeling it? <laughs> all I know is there's a guy I work with, and he says this all the time. He goes, I would build shit for free. I do it at home all the time. I come here and get paid because I work with a bunch of assholes. Uh -huh, that fucking sums it up. So technically, at your job, you get paid to work with a bunch of assholes that you would never in a million years be friends with. Yeah. But you're forced to spend like most of your fucking time awake with them <laughs> and say things like, yeah, that's cool, bro. I could see that being fun. And it's like, yeah, I don't fucking care. Just get me fucking my eight hours. Get me the fuck out of this nightmare. So pretending to be an adult, you know, that sucks. And then another chore that I absolutely fucking hate is making lunch. Because this is what I do every goddamn day. All right? I get home, and I go, ugh, another day tomorrow at work. Yeah, got to remember to make my lunch. Day goes by, start drinking. About 10.30, I go, ugh, yeah, I'll make lunch in the morning. I wake up. I, eh, I, I just want to eat lunch. So I skip lunch most days just because I don't want to make lunch. How much time do you get for lunch? Half hour. Oh, just a half hour shit. Yeah. You don't even have time to go anywhere. There's only one place close enough to get to. It's a Burger King. Mm. So sometimes I'll run up there and get something. But like, that's our choices. Do you want a hamburger or nothing? Well, actually, do you want to spend 10 bucks for lunch? Because your lazy ass can't get up and make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the morning. Now you got to start meal prepping, like you talked about. Oh yeah, by the way, Ray and I were just on. Ray and I were just on uh, Beard Laws uh, TikTok Tuesday last uh, last Tuesday. Now their gimmick is they play TikToks, and uh, I made a funny. There was one where a drunk guy fell over in the kitchen, and I said, oh. uh, "How many times have you been in that situation, Ray?" And Ray told a story about how he meal prepped uh, spaghetti. some spaghetti yeah. uh, without knowing about it. That is great. If I could get that guy to do that all the time, but that guy is not into cooking usually. Like I told you, I have a dry erase board on my fridge that tells me the expiration dates of the food that's in the fridge. You've never told me this before. This is. Oh, I didn't tell you this. No, this is. Oh, so this is uh, groundbreaking. Okay. So on the front of my fridge, it'll say like spaghetti and meat, and I'll write the date that the meat goes bad. That's why I made it that night. I came home, I grabbed a beer out of the fridge, and when I closed it, I could clearly see that it was the last day to either make it or freeze it. So obviously, I made the decision to make it. <laughs> but like, oh, so all right, so I let, do that let, for let, all the foods. Like, let milk. me break this down, though. You so when you get home from the grocery store, you write down the expir expiration date. It's on the bottle of milk on yep. the fridge. Milk, bread, 
anything that goes bad so that I can figure out when I got to make it. Cause I don't have enough money to, to come into my kitchen and find moldy bread or, you know, expired milk. Cause this is genius. Cause I just don't, I also use it when I'm cooking cause I don't have a timer. So it'll say like cook for 30 minutes or whatever. So on the dry erase board, I'll write whatever time I'm supposed to bring it out of the oven on the dry erase board. <laughs> you know, your phone has a timer, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I got all these different color markers and shit to go on my dry erase board. All right. Fair enough. And I put my grocery list on it. So as I run out of things, I just write what how, I'm out of. How big is this dry erase board? It's, uh, it's about, it t- you know, the freezer door. Yeah. It, it takes up probably three quarters of the door. Jesus. Well, how small is your handwriting then? Oh, I'm a, you, you can't even read my handwriting. <laughs> like right now there's like six things on that thing that takes up the whole fucking board. <laughs> That's a, yeah. I mean, it's a great idea on paper. It's a great idea. Well, it just, I do it because I, you know, it, I write reminders up there too. Like, hey, pay the gas bill. You know, shit like that. If I put it on the calendar, I ignore it. Because mm. I like to, you know, the funnest part is when you get to swipe it off. Swoosh. <laughs> it's gone. I made spaghetti. Swoosh. <laughs> I'm going to have to actually think about that idea. That's like, that is a really yeah. good idea. I got the whole thing for like $14 on Amazon. It's got like four markers and eraser, these little magnets that came with it, the dry erase board. I like it a lot. Yeah. It's better than writing on my front of my refrigerator and then trying to erase it. <laughs> yeah, off it really is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, writing on paper, wasting paper. Yeah. Yeah. Paper. I got paper all over the place. Like at work, I use post-it notes, hmm. like a dry erase board. I put post-it notes everywhere. Like I go through thousands of them a month. It's crazy. I also have a dry erase board at work, though. <laughs> Man, I love dry erase boards. I'm gonna great. see if I can find us an affiliate for dry erase boards. <laughs> oh, if you could, I tell you what, man, I love me some dry erase boards. They are the shit. Hang them all over your wall. Oh, I would have. I'd I'd have every you know, instead of pictures, I would just hang up dry erase boards and draw pictures on them. Are you- Write your script on dry erase boards. Yeah, well, like uh, at my house that I used to have, I had a six foot by twelve foot chalkboard in the garage. Nice. Like a like, me and my hit my buddy. He's a carpenter, and this school is getting rid of them. Nice. Like a full like whatever it is, twenty four foot long by six foot, like these giant chalkboards. Yeah. So we got it back to his house, and we cut it in half. And put one in his garage, one in my garage. Nice. Like it's a legit chalkboard, like an actual oh, it's a legit like chalk erasers. You bang them together to clean <laughs> them out. And at that time, uh, I would write messages like that were important that my wife needed to see on the chalkboard in the garage, like dentist appointment, April, whatever, what yeah. time. And she's like, Wouldn't it just be easier to tell me? I'm like, ah, I got a chalkboard for that. So, yeah, apparently not a good form of communication in a marriage, but whatever. That's why I live in an apartment now. <laughs> yeah, well. All right. Now, three in this category. And this is a good one. I like this one a lot. So if you make your bed in the morning, you have already accomplished something that day. So it starts the day off on a good note because what's more fun than coming home? And when you go to bed, your bed's already made. Yeah, is this a chore? Is this? Are we still on the chore list? Yeah, we're still on the chores. All right. Now, are you a bed maker? You make yes. your bed? Yeah, because my friend uh, turned me on to this because he saw this video about this military guy who talked about if you know, start your day off on the right foot, and all it takes is just making that bed to get your day going in the right direction. You've you've got one win right off the rip if you make your bed because you're not being lazy. You're doing it. You're winning. And this guy has this whole big, long fucking spiel. He's doing like a like a military fucking thing. And at the end, it's amazing. And it makes perfect sense. If you don't do anything else worth that flying fuck right the rest of the day when you get home, your bed, <laughs> that's a fucking win. <laughs> You're not crawling into that fucked up mess. It's sad. 
You know, you got a bad day. Why make it worse with a shitty fucked up bed with the shit all over the place? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, I I do that now. I would recommend that to everyone. You want to you want to change your mental state? Make that goddamn bed in the morning. And it does help you go. All right. I got to win already. And so when I come home later and I just want to curl up in a ball and fucking die, I can do it in a med made bed. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I, I see that now. I mean, <clears throat> we I do make, I mean, mostly Barbara makes it, but before I was with her, I never really cared about a made bed. But yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, up till yeah. I saw this guy's video and my buddy talked about it too. He does the same thing. He, he's single. He makes his bed every day. And it does. It sets your mind frame for the rest of the day. So now we're to the, to the final topic here, Casey. Is that the last chore of the day? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Just make the-, <laughs> make the fucking bed. Wake up. Wake up. Make your right, bed. Your Beat chores for the day. Got lunch. <laughs> and try not to fucking kill anybody before you get home to sleep in your nice made bed. That's it. That's the chore. Right. Everything Simple. else is just. Just fire. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah. It's a shell game. <laughs> That's the so, title of the episode. Life is a shell game. Yeah. So now, after all this nonsense, okay, here is the final topic that Google says is a good topic for a podcast. All right. Now, keep in mind, it's the last one. I didn't rearrange these. All these others came before this one. Okay. Are you ready for this? Interview guess. That's number five. Interview guess. So Google is telling us to change the format of our show. Google is saying that it's more important for me to tell people how to make their bed and hard boil fucking eggs before we get guests. Why are we getting guests? If I can just talk about dumb shit, it's number five on the list is getting guests. Well, let's see how this show does, and then we can change the format. I mean, you could tell us a different fucking tell us how to do something different every week. According to Google, this is the fucking this is it, man. I mean, you've been around a lot longer than me, yeah. so like you I'm know sure. a lot more stuff than I do. You could teach us stuff. I'm headed to work tomorrow to quit my fucking job because <laughs> this is money in the bank. This is easy. <laughs> Gonna hand my landlord an IOU <laughs> on a piece of paper. <laughs> Why do you? Why does he owe you, or why do you owe him? I owe you. Oh no! When the rent's due and this doesn't pay, I'm oh. give him a piece of paper that says I owe you, and hand it to him. Oh, the landlord. Yeah. But I I don't understand why get guests would be number five on the list. Yeah. Like that's a pretty standard thing, right? Like, are they in particular? Do you think Google put them in any? Like, are they numbered? Is it? Yes. Does it say? Yes. Oh. It says number five. Get guests to interview. Now, it doesn't say celebrities. Hmm. So I'm assuming I could be like, all right, welcome to the show. Today, me and Casey are talking to my garbage man. And I'm sure he's got all these cool stories, which garbage men do have some kick-ass stories, by the way. Yeah. But I actually, I'm trying to get this one guy on who I'm pretty sure is going to have some amazing stories. His name is, I saw him uh, last weekend at uh, the Swanee. Roots Festival. Yeah. Um, his name is Verlin Thompson or Verlin Thomas. He played with Guy Clark for 20, 25 years. He was like Guy Clark's right hand man on, on stage, his guitar player. And he was fucking awesome. He's like 70. Awesome. And I saw also uh, the fourth to last hot electric hot tuna show ever. This is their, the last tour of electric hot tuna. Um, that they're ever playing and uh they played there and fucking incredible man so fucking good at 82 your mccalkinen can still fucking rock harder than any guitar player out there today guaranteed dude is fucking amazing Hmm. so you really think they're gonna retire or is it just smoke and mirrors well, no, they're they're not doing the electric anymore. They're still playing uh, acoustic. They're still going to do the oh. acoustic tour. Um, yeah. But they have, I think, four more electric shows scheduled. That's it. Hmm. That's got to be hard because that's when it's all you know how to do. Like when these guys are in bands, that's why all these none of these guys fucking retire, man. Yeah. 
you're like 75. And it's like, yeah, guess I'll go be a carpenter. Well, like now, as you were in a band, so why would why would you stop doing electric and switch to acoustic? Is ele- as a, are the electric instruments heavier, maybe, or like what uh, louder? The, the only thing I can think of is that it's way easier to walk in with just a couple guitars than all the goddamn gear. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like I I, I've, I don't know if I told you before, but I started as a drummer, and then I realized how expensive drums were, how heavy it was, and how much the singer was having fun. Not carrying nothing. Right. And I stole my drums, got a mic and a PA system for practice. And for shows, I didn't take anything. I had a very strict policy of if the club don't have their own PA system, I ain't fucking going because I ain't carrying nothing. <laughs> Makes sense. Yep. And then, uh, you know, then that would always lead to fights because the drummers always need help and, you know. You're off doing fun things while they're lugging their shit up three flights of stairs. <laughs> That's why I'm not a drummer, asshole. That's why I, yeah, I would recommend you pick a different instrument. <laughs> Fuck, I'll play fucking flute before I play drums again. <laughs> Has there ever been a uh, punk flautist? There probably is. I mean, Dropkick Murphy's got all kinds of weird shit in their band. Dude, so we at this festival that we went to, it was like uh, there are a bunch of different bands playing on. There's three different stages or four different stages, and we went to see this one band that I really like, Grandpa's Cough Medicine. They only play locally down in Florida here now anymore. I was like, we got at, right after their their finish, we got to get over to the other stage because I want to see this. Uh, they were called the Snake Oil Medicine Show, right? And we got over there and I was like, this is not who I thought it was. Like, I thought this was another band. And I was like looking at their at their thing. And I was like, there's somebody else that uses the medicine show band that the medicine show thing that I was like, that's who I thought this was. And Barbara just looked at me, old crow medicine show. And I was like, oh, because like this band was nothing like old crow medicine show. They, this band was like, think of like like a bluegrass Frank Zappa type band. Like they were like really fucking out there, but bluegrass. So because there's so many bands that come out now, like locally here, because Cleveland's got a lot of local bands. There's always some kid who thinks he's come up with the most original name. And it's like a really fucking famous name. And the club owners are just like, we don't fucking care. That's great. Yeah, you want to be whatever. And it's a band from like the 50s or 60s. And now we're getting to the point now where like bands from the 80s, these dumbasses don't even know that those bands existed. And it's just so embarrassing because it's like, oh, oh, look at that. The Pixies are playing this weekend at a bar that holds 50 people. No shit. Hmm. Huh. That will probably sell out. It's like, Jesus Christ. I compare it to people who don't Google search their fucking podcast name. Yeah. I Googled my, I came up with another one. So I want to do fourth and drunk podcast where I rewatch Browns games and do my own commentary <laughs> to how the game's going as it's, as if it's in real time. So I'd only have to do like 17 episodes a year. Cause we never make the fucking playoffs. How many, I mean, how many people that are going, wa- going back and watching the Browns lose football games? Well, they're not, they're watching it for the commentary. Okay. I'm going to give you the play by play, like as if the radio guy could say whatever the fuck he actually really <laughs> wanted to say about that game. I would, do it live. I would do it live, but I don't think I could say Browns, NFL, or any of the players' names. So I would have to rename everybody. Hmm. Which could be fun. Would there be a way that we could stream a game, like not stream a game, but play a, a game through this, and we could do it together? We could try try, try yeah. one out. Yeah, we could see try how it. it. Goes over. Yeah, I'm sure that'd go over fine. We just have to remember if it's live, we got to call whatever. Like if it's the Browns, we just call them the Orange Team, and if they're playing the Cowboys, we call them the the Stars. You know, and then we just make up names for the players. Wait, even for old games, we have to do that for? Well, yeah, because 
they fucking protect their copyright like fucking crazy. Oh, shit, yeah. But we could just make up our own fun names. Like, we could call <laughs> Sean Watson the, the, the billion dollar man. Shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll think about it. I, I'm sure it would be entertaining because yeah, we got to. I mean, we got to come up with some good. ideas. We're running out of guests. Yeah, I know because <laughs> announcers, you know, they want to be like, for fuck's sake, man, why the fuck would they do that? Yeah, I'm sitting there saying that while I'm watching the game, and like, what the fuck was that? But you know, the announcer sitting there like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. I was watching uh, the Chiefs game a little bit today, and you know who kind of sort of does that a little bit in his own way? It's the first time I ever heard him on commentary. Tony Romo. Oh, yeah, Romo. Yeah, because in the beginning, he would just tell you what the plays were ahead of time. Yeah. Because he know he's an NFL player, obviously. And uh-huh. he's a quarterback. So he was just calling out and getting, like, all the plays right. He's like, oh, this jet sweep to the left. <laughs> And he was right most of the time. So he stopped doing that and started doing better commentary. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Like he'll say uh, something like we were watching the game. Like, yeah, he, he probably should have caught that. Or, you know, like yeah. he, yeah. You know, yeah. Hit his hand. You got to catch that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah throw like little that. digs in. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you know, that's bad. If the commentator up in the booth can tell you whatever play is, you might want to mix it up a little bit. But yeah. He was he did that another time with a penalty. Like the guy they called a penalty on somebody and the other commentator was like, Oh, I wonder what this is gonna be and and he was like on holding on number ninety eight and like they the then the referee goes, Holding number ninety eight and the other commentator was like, You never miss a thing, do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was watching that game. You can pretty much holding is uh, one of those things where in the NFL they say this is why it's rigged. Because you can call holding on every play. And that's how they control the narrative that they of who they want to win. So, like, even in, like, the Baltimore-Pittsburgh game today, Lamar takes off for, like, a 25-yard run. But as soon as you see that flag in the backfield, you know it's coming back for holding on the offense. So they keep that game close, and then Pittsburgh eventually wins it. But they could, it's true. They could call holding on almost every play. But for some reason... Sometimes on big plays like that, that flag comes yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. Huh. Yeah. As a lineman, like I played football from the time I was like six years old till I graduated high school. We were taught to hold. Like as I was an offensive yeah. lineman and we were taught to hold. Like if you get in there you, tight enough yeah. when you block, you, you, can hold, you can grab yeah. them and hold them. Get a little bit of chest hair in there too while you're yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. But yeah. It's so, so rampant. I, I wish they would just change that rule. Just say, all right, all holdings legal for linemen. And then that would take away that penalty completely. Cause it's a ridiculous penalty. It's a 10 yard free first down. Yeah. Just well, some of it though is pretty bad. Like I mean, you're watching that chiefs game today. The dude, you know, he didn't, he didn't want his quarterback getting, getting hit. So, I mean, he was like, he was holding him like around the, you know, what? Well, no, I'm saying was pretty this- bad. The chest area should, like, if you're moving around and stuff, but you got the front of the jersey, that should be legal. I'm not talking about, like, grabbing the guy by his fucking neck, <laughs> dragging him to the ground. That's still going to be illegal, but, like, if you've got jersey, you should be able to hold on to that jersey. I don't know yeah. where they come up with this idea that holding on to the guy is bad. What are you supposed to do? It's a fucking 400-pound <laughs> hurricane coming at you. Doing fucking this. Some spinning. of those guys are so big, man. Some of those linemen, holy they're shit. They're so fast now. But then, you know, I'm like, yeah, what are you going to do? I don't, know, I don't know, Ray. I don't what know. What are you going to do? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to call it a fucking day. <laughs> and uh, we have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that Google knows everything and this this episode is money in the bank. Thank you, Google. <laughs> All right, Casey. All right. I'll see ya. All right.